Professor, take me to the apartment of your childhood. Uh, there we are. First of mm -hmm. all, where are we? Are there books on the wall? What is the, the, the um, culture of your childhood? Oh, we had a... <clears throat> I had a really nice apartment. It was, uh, it was. Uh, so we, I, I have a brother, so uh, who's a little younger than I. So, uh, so my parents and the two of us. So there'll be four people. We had a nice, charming. Uh, not what I know. Chukol had two rooms, and it's uh, not a two bedroom, just two rooms, yeah, and yeah. and and uh, in the kitchen, which was. Uh, Five square meters area, but it was so it was very it was very difficult for us to just fit around the dinner table. But still, is this it's, Moscow. It's in Moscow. It's yeah, in it's Moscow. in Moscow. It's almost on the tenth floor of a of an apartment building. Uh, and when you were born, it's yeah. still the Soviet Union. Yes, of course. Yeah. So, is this? Does your father or mother have privileges in terms of having access to this kind of place? What 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 work do they do? What? So uh, my uh, my father uh, uh, first had a career as professional athlete, and ah. then as he finished that career, he in fact uh, while I was small, he uh, went to grad school, and his um, uh, his graduate studies were around. Uh, so this is not called sociology in um, in the West. I think it's called maybe like applied sociology. So mm -hmm. that would be. Uh, public opinion polls and oh, yeah. the like, and so this was this were the very early days of computers. So we had the punch cards everywhere. In fact, you know a lot of things were written on punch cards. And so, uh, so the the yeah, let and then say the eight year old. Let's just pick a, an age yeah. for you. Uh huh. Has a computer in his uh, in the apartment? No, of course not. The first personal computer came to Moscow when I was a student. So this this uh, I was a student in Moscow State. We got the first pers the first two personal computers, and then uh, those were used around the clock. We 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 had a computer. We had a um, a machine from uh, from Norway. Uh, it was called Nord. It uh, that was a machine that had four. I mean, it was a nice computer by the time. It was it had at at the time it has forty megabytes memory for the whole thing for the whole department. So that was considered a lot. And uh, I'm not going to let you go to university yet. We're, we're yeah. still in your household. So, so, the, so in, you're in, surrounded by the old kind of computer, which are books, maybe. Yeah, so we had. All I'm saying is that so. And then, and then, and yeah. then, my mom she was trained as a railroad engineer, but what she ah. she had a career not. Uh, not actually working on the railroad, but instead editing uh, industry journals, so, ah. which is, is, you know, again, so that's that's. Uh, so. so in the class of Soviet Union, they're yeah. middle class. Oh yeah. So yeah, to speak. We, yeah, um, so, we, so um, let us talk about how they encouraged you. Um, again, this is mostly the history of your curiosity uh -huh. and your intellect. So, uh, were they interested in your education? Did they push you in, in any direction? Um, so, I don't think it's just my parents. I would, the way the way I recall it, it's mm. from every direction. We were uh, we were encouraged to learn, and uh, somehow learning was some some end in itself, in the sense. So, it's somehow it's good to learn. And uh, this was not like if you you know you learn so that you pass that exam so that you have a good job. Good job, yeah. yeah. No. It's not. It's just. It's just. A, just rather abstract. Or you know, do somehow rush this. This sort of abstract pursuits like chess or ballet mm -hmm. or or they've uh, just kind of pure celebration of human spirits. They're they're popular with Russians. So, oh. we've, we've, uh, so yeah, this would be widespread. This yes, is exactly. This is. It's. It's like. It, it's. It's cool. It's not. It's not everybody was of course a good student, but it's. Uh, the uh, I think the culture was such that the good students are good and the bad students are bad. Yeah. And so it's not uh, the knowledge was... What kind of um, elementary to maybe middle school did you go to? Uh, so it, the way it works, it's, it was one school. You entered it with under the seven, seven, when they're seven year old, first yeah. grade, and then after 10 years you finish it. So it's not... Ah, the, the same school the same, whole time. same school this whole time, yeah. How um, I have the feeling you have the experience of whether or not there is a kind of talent scout strategy among the teachers who that are looking for abilities, helping guide them in certain directions. Is this what you remember? So what certainly isn't very much in Russian tradition is to have this kind of circles, Olympiads, and that uh, that we had in many many subjects. And I didn't do it in I mean in math I did Olympiads, but it wasn't you know somehow it wasn't wasn't so central to me. I know uh, it will uh, come later. Too, yeah, but, but it's 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 so we had Olympics in everything like 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 I won 
I, when I studied in economics department, so I did like economics Olympiads, and uh, I even took went to music Olympiad once. I'm terrible at music, but it required writing an essay, so that was good at that. Um, <laughs> the, the essay was about Lenin. And music, yes. Oh, right. yeah, you know, I, it's a I've famous, famous, famous piece of yeah, musical yeah, right, exactly. criticism. Yeah, uh, but uh, again, you must, you, you are. Yeah. I'm hearing in an environment that yeah. encourages learning, yeah. but isn't pushing you in any particular way. No, no, not no particular way. No. In fact, yeah, I was no. Now we have a, at school where we're free to pursue anything we want. So we, we, we of course, we we being boys, but we, you know, we spent a lot of time playing chess or going to the gym, shoot basketball, or even we had a uh, so in um, there used to be uh, some kind of like a military training course. Yes, and we'd sometimes hang out there. So it's, it's uh, this. Uh, but for the school, <laughs> have you uh, been pre-selected? Is it just no, absolutely? It's just, uh, um, it whoever. wasn't the closest school to to where I, to where I, maybe I had to walk 20 minutes to, to I mean there were schools closer to my I mean right. Moscow is pretty densely populated so in principle I couldn't have gone somewhere closer but right. it's a but it's a, but a, so this was this was sort of the best school in some broadly defined neighborhood I mean and so and there you were and there I was yeah uh, a little bit more about the Olympiads I know they were yeah. not the ones that you really uh, shown in was not uh -huh. math, but uh, what were the? What, what, what were your <laughs> not strengths? music either. Yeah, and not music. <laughs> but what were your strengths? Um, um, perceived strengths. What what Olympiads did you do well in? Um, I did a lot of subjects. It's uh, well, I guess the since I put most of uh, time into this economics, which is for a brief moment of time was my profession. I guess I did best on that, but it's. Uh, but, I, I, uh, I'm I'm actually quite. Well, interested. I, I really liked chemistry, for example, and I I wanted to be you a like. physicist, but uh, but that didn't work out. Maybe it will <laughs> maybe in the future. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, staying with economics. Yeah. Um, First of all, I'm not really quite sure whether or not it would have been perceived differently in the Soviet context mm -hmm. and in the capitalist West. I would have assumed so, but maybe not. But more, more importantly, because you later become a mathematician, uh -huh. um, as you look back mm -hmm. on uh, the young economist or the potential economist, um, did you think of it as a science? Oh, I wanted it to be science. Yeah, this is the way. Many economists want. Ex yeah, exactly. And and the you, reason you saw it. and the reason I I I, uh, I was happy to switch to math is I. Maybe I thought this is not going to be a science in my lifetime, and it's ah. a, it's not. It's just for the actual complexity of the subject. It's not for, for, uh, for lack of effort or mental abilities of people who try to make it a science. Right. It's just just really hard. So yeah. you. I won't say you drop economics, but yeah. you shift. Yeah. At what age? Uh, so this is after I went to the army. So this, so this, when I came back from the army, so while in the army I had a, I had some time to think. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I felt like maybe I should do something else. Yeah. The army comes after or before university. Uh, this is in the middle. So this is this is the. Um, so traditionally, in in Russia, students don't have to serve in the army, but this this law has been changing, and it's been specifically specifically changing, um, uh, you know, around when I was a student because um, I, I mean I'm not quite sure what the, what the numbers are, but I think there was a I mean it's, it's like a, um, you know like my parents are the people who were small during the war. And right. so there's there's a, there's a there's a demographic dip in, in yes. and so this is um, and the, the general I guess the generals decided they want the students to serve too, and uh, they didn't have enough soldiers. And so what <laughs> age are you when you? So there? then uh, so normally it's 18, but 18 you go to serve uh, in the army, and so we were first called to serve and then sent back so from from the university. Now we always have to be aware, particularly with your generation, of mm. the incredible changes happening uh -huh. at this time. So when you go into the army, is this? That's the last year of Afghanistan, and the so then the, everybody's very happy that they were drawing the troops, except the those uh, those officers that want to go and then fight. Well, in every country there's such. Right, you know, of course. Yeah. Um, I'm the, sure in the United States there are people who aren't happy with the collapse. <laughs> The slow collapse of the Soviet Union happens when you're in your early twenties. 
or maybe even just before? Um, it's, uh, yeah, those were co kind of complicated processes. It's, mm -hmm. it's this, uh, it's like, uh, it's like many processes in life. They've, uh, the uh, the process of collapse they sometimes look like a rejuvenation first and so mm -hmm. this is the when we were when I was at the, my economics years those were amazing years because those were the years when Russia was beginning to you know open up to new yeah. ideas and people would come from more older world and it's, it's a place for economic thought it was a place for incredible activity and so that was uh, that was the good years and so this is uh, but then then the, then they turned a little sour. I mean, as we were, like when we were, uh, my wife and I, we were married in um, in ninety one, yes. and just before the uh, the economic reforms, the, so to speak, free market reforms. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, a <laughs> which which did bring a serious austerity, like right, but, yeah. So that's a. Uh, and Is so when our when our first daughter was born in ninety two, it was a little. It was it was it was great. It was still the best time of my life, but it was a little required. It required more of me than it required of my parents to raise to raise my brother and I. Right, I I still <laughs> need to understand. Yeah. Uh, of, of of course, you lived it, but how the implication of the political system affects the education system. I mean, this is when you are making quite critical decisions mm -hmm. in terms of your own intellectual life. Is this happening in a vacuum? Is this happening in, as a response to events? Um, oh, you, you, there, there are many things how going together at the same time. and They happen in different in different planes, so to speak, in different levels, and so this is, there is a, there is a, my wife and I starting our family, this is, this yeah. is, uh, this is one super happy development, then there is me finding what, what is it, uh, what is it I want to do in mathematics, and there were still enough people around to, to somehow guide me through this, I was very happy, a lot of people left very, uh, very quickly, and then, uh, right. but, but there were still a lot, still, it's, it's And you were determined at that point to stay. So, no, no, as I was finishing, so I switched to math, I uh, so came back from the army in, uh, in like, 89, something like that. And so this is, uh, and by that time, at Moscow State University, already a good fraction of professors have left. And, uh, and so this is, uh, well, the, as it, it was a major, major center of mathematics, and uh, uh, in which you'd have a specialist on every single subject. But now many of them were gone, and then, uh, but still, be enough to. But we're still enough people, and uh, who helped me navigate the world of math. And so this, this were, this was a very interesting time. And then, of course, then there's a, then there's a, there's a question in what to do, like, once I finish my studies, yeah. like you know, what, what how do I'm gonna construct my professional career. Yes. And then it's just a question of chance, really. With, uh, with uh, um, Some people I met invented me to come to Chicago. That's, but know, I still don't know what kind of math you're doing. Uh -huh. How are you making those decisions? What field are you aspiring to? Pure mathematics? The, the pure, math yeah, I, well, I don't know. I mean, somehow good math is, this is every the point will, will, will everybody will make to you, that the good, the good math is, is math. It's somehow, it's, a, it's not like people say, typically, typically tools for creating, a, for solving any given problem are not found next to the problem. It's like if you have a, a door locked with a key, the key usually doesn't lie. Yeah. Right in front of yes. the doorstep, it has to be some different. So if you're, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, in math, it's only the general development of thing brings tools and uh, on the applications together. You can't really start out. In, it's good thing to have some goal, but it's also a good thing to realize that you know you're gonna do some good in trying to achieve those goals, but you're probably not gonna not not gonna solve the particular goal you set out to, to but the, solve. But the world is organized uh -huh. still around theses. Uh, That's right. This is so. This is the the uh, so. This is my uh, my advisor. Uh, so I had uh, I had an official advisor who was uh, uh, Kirill of this. this uh, this great Russian mathematician. I, um, it, I had, I'm obviously under huge influence of him, and his, he was a student of Gelfand in turn. So this kind of, in some sense, come from this whole Gelfand school. 
And also I had an official advisor who was there in Moscow to I mean, Kirill of having essentially moved to the West. And uh, so this is uh, Alchansky who was there in Moscow to actually actually babysit me through the mm. or not just babysit, just, just kind of grow, help grow up. And uh, But it comes from the same general Kelfon school. So this is, was uh, some mix of... So I, I, I now classify myself as a mathematical physicist, but I started out my official, the name of the official is called whatever the the uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the division within the mathematics that I was graduating from is called functional analysis, which really was representation theory, more representation theory. But uh, so this is this is this is what the field was at the time. Uh, the decision to look for the next stage. Uh -huh. um, you have your at this point. I know it's not a PhD, but it's called. Uh, it's well. I essentially had so when I uh, as I finished my uh, undergrad, I essentially had my PhD ready. It's just uh, it's just those were um, it was a little difficult to assemble the actual defense committee. So it took like two years to assemble the defense committee because so many people yeah were people gone. weren't around. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, the. Again, I'm, I'm just interested in the stages of life and the mm -hmm. building of a, a career. I know yeah. it's a career in your head and not just, oh, I must be at this yeah. level. But the decision to look at the West for the next stage, is this happening at the graduate level or the postgraduate level? It's so, when I, um, as I was uh, sort of, so there was this moment when I finished my undergrad and I was, and, and there was no, there was no point to be a graduate student at Moscow State because, uh, first of all, there was no financial support, mm. uh, only duties. And, uh, and so I was a graduate student by sort of correspondence. Which is which is which is was fine enough since I already had my essentially had my thesis work done. And, uh, and that, that, uh, simultaneously I was involved in some couple of other uh, kind of mass centers in Moscow. So this this was this time which was of uh, between ninety three and ninety five were the times of great great uh, uncertainty in Russia in general. Of course. And so um, and so this is um, in the actually so the way we lived is that my wife had a business, mm -hmm. a small business, and so which uh, which was provided for not only for our family but also for my parents. <laughs> we also gave money to my parents, mm -hmm. we, my wife's parents. And, uh, and so this is, uh, she didn't, she wasn't 100% sure she wants to, she wants to give this up and move to the West. I was thinking this yeah. is an argument yeah. against leaving. Yeah, exactly. She tried, but then, but then it worked out, it worked out super because she, uh, I, like I said, I was invited to come as a postdoc to Chicago to work with Victor Ginsburg, another student of Kirillov, uh, like Olshansky. So again, another person from this tree of Gelfand. And uh, she was able to get into the business school there in Chicago, and somehow miraculously we were able to pay for it with the, oh. with the, with the, with the, with the combination of, <laughs> of everything. <laughs> so is uh, yeah. language going to be an issue Mo uh, moving to Chicago, at least for her in business? And no, for you? not at all. I mean, she actually. So this is my. Um, in, in high school, uh, so in, in university I didn't take any, f I mean, I, I took some French classes, but at, at high school I took German classes. And, well, actually, the German Olympics I did pretty well in those, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but so this is my, but, but still, professional, life of professional mathematician doesn't require so, uh, such an eloquence in, in foreign language. It's, I mean, I made it this far with the with the with the with the, with the terrible English that I speak. So this is. So it's it's a yeah. it's, a, it's a symbolic discourse. Is that what you mean? I mean. No, I'm just saying the the, the language. No, no, it's just it's it's um, it's a, first of all it's it's it's. Uh, I do appreciate when math is well written, well presented with with correct choice of, of beautiful English words, but, but for, for most of math, the, the, the set put get type of a vocabulary is, is, is sufficient to get, to get the, to get the, but the but message I'm, across. What I'm, what I'm uh, asking and is... And so you, you don't need so many, not so many English words to communicate, to communicate math. But tell me the process of communication uh -huh. in math then. It happens mostly through symbols. I mean, I, you are communicating. I actually really prefer to write it in words, but uh, ah. but uh, but uh, but 
it's true that you you can read the paper in a language you don't understand and you can figure out what roughly it says just from the symbol it uses. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're in Chicago. Mm -hmm. She's in Chicago. You're both yeah. in Chicago. I still say for her, the, the language question must have been more difficult than for you. Absolutely, uh, but she also invested invested much more than I into studying English. And studying saying, English. Yeah, but she um, and she's been studying it for much longer. She studied it in school in, in high. I mean, it through through the school. So for school. her, it's not it's not a big problem. Yeah, I wish she was here. She would demonstrate uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> so she uh, in Chicago. The nature of the department, the kinds of choices you're making. Uh -huh. um, you are now how old? Well, that's a good question. So. So we arrived to Chicago, that was 96, I think. So okay. that would make me 26, 27 years old, something a, like that. A little bit of culture shock, maybe, or no? Um, maybe the shock was I had um, a vaccination, uh, because when Kirill, well, Kirill, well, I was a grad student, I mean, that I, I came to visit Kirill for a couple of months at Pan. And those were the old days at Penn when it was it was really kind of a rough neighborhood around mm, Penn. Yeah. And so, uh, in fact, the one grad student was killed. And that's, uh, so oh. that was, uh, so I was prepared to come to Chicago, to the south side of Chicago. Ah. I was totally prepared. Right. And, and, and in fact, we, we never experienced anything, anything. What about a longing for Moscow and its cultural life and rhythm and so forth? This it's... Um, mm, it's a big change. It is a big change. It's it's maybe the uh, the way we were then fixated on uh, on Ines getting through her MBA degree and our uh, uh, our second daughter was born in Chicago and uh, and I had to. I mean, postdoc is kind of a stressful time, mm. and so maybe the, there was just really no time to. Uh, to to worry about the, to worry about the and there were some other attractions like we saw Michael Jordan play which is yeah. not, not bad <laughs> given that we're both my wife and I were, well I'm not you know, I'm not a, I'm not the best basketball player in my family but uh, so my wife my father are all pretty good but you're, <laughs> but you're the best mathematician in your family uh, so I want to yeah. know I want to know about how you proceed to think about the problems that you you want to take on? I think I was really lucky in Chicago in that. Um, so the, the, uh, what happens in, what, what, what ideally would, what happens in this kind of postdoctoral yes. stage is that uh, you exit the nest of your advisor and you somehow, yes. you, what things which you previously, you previously uh, thought they're all, you know, this is what the math world is, this is what the important problems are. Yes. All of a sudden you look at it from, from a big distance and you realize that math is very, very big and your advisor's nest is relatively small. Yes. And, this, uh, and then you somehow have to find yourself in a bigger landscape. And, and, uh, and, and Chicago is a really good place for that because I've... Uh, I made friends with people who, uh, well, not only friends in personal sense, but also in some kind of, kind of, you know, appreciating certain new kinds of math that I didn't really appreciate before. So I, I made very important, met very important people there. So like, of course, I've met Rahul Panderipande, with whom I wrote a lot, a lot of papers later, later in life, and then, but also, but also. People like I, mean, I didn't interact that much with Ginsburg either in, in Moscow. So like being with Ginsburg, with, with Balance and Rinfeld there, and Fulton was a huge influence on me too. This I uh, this whole my whole interest in algebraic geometry that was that was latent. Is that the English word latent? Yeah. Before uh, before uh, before Chicago, and then became went to the into acute stage there. So that's a so build your own nest. What is it made out of? You said you give you give up the nest of, of your uh, your teachers and you uh -huh. begin to build your own. So what is it made of? Um, not sure. So the, actually, so it both in kind of personal life and uh, and in mathematical life, we're a bit of nomads actually. So it's uh, like we've uh, um, you know one kind of consider both Moscow and New York City my home now, but we've lived in so many places I uh, uh, through my career. And, and, and in math, I also I sort of just follow, uh, follow I guess, my curiosity and the logic of the subject. So I, I don't, I never thought this would be, you know, 
we have built myself a lot of uh, chicken wire and then and surround some piece of land and say, well, this is going to be... Remember, the nest was your phrase. Not right, that. right, 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 right. So this is, this is, it's, 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 it's good in the conversation to reuse the, 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 the mental the images, metaphors. the metaphors, yeah. So, so this is, I've, um, I've, um, I kind of moved from subject to subject, like I said, following my interest and following the logic of the subject. Is, uh, uh, One day you're going to get a field medal. What is that going to be for, and how do you get there? Oh, that's exactly for <laughs> being all over math. I think this is <laughs> this is this is <laughs> this is they couldn't decide what this guy's really doing. So <laughs> you're going to have to decide, and the world's going to have to decide it's worth worth listening to. I think they say it's, I think it says for like making connections or something like this. <laughs> <laughs> Not for I, I don't. I don't. I don't accept it. I accept yeah. that you you you're working on something, and that something will be recognized. What is it that you're working? No, on? but really, it's it's uh, like uh, uh, like they, there's this there's some. Oh, well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe. So this is the uh, the way I'd like to describe this process yes. to my grad students. Yes. Is that. Um, that's I mean not just math, science in general. Okay. It it kind of happens by curiosity and luck. So it's a, it's a, it's not like people. If you want to discover penicillin, it's not like people set out to discover no, penicillin. I mean, it's just uh, just 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 build a telescope, look at the sky, and see what what you discover. But something and so nuts. and so this is I and so if you if you if you if you search, you can find something. So like if uh, it's uh, there's there's. Uh, you know, I found a couple of places where something I knew turned out to be applicable to solve some problems people cared about. So this is, I guess I was lucky. And, uh, but this was of the kind that you, you bring tools from, from, from Australia to, and sell them from the United Kingdom. Yeah, but yeah. you're making it very literal and <laughs> yeah. actually in mathematics there are directions that are acknowledged, insights right. that are seen to be changing the, the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I suspect you had some insights that began to change the broader conversation, at least in, in the problems you are taking on. What are those problems? So this is the... Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it could be a little technical. So there's, uh, you can be a little technical. Uh, many people who are listening to this will understand. So okay. just broadly. So one oh, if it's not interesting. If it's not interesting. To you, and then, they don't want to listen to my lecture, they can listen to my lecture. So I think it's a uh, so I don't know. It it's it's it, it has a so there there are all this kind of an internal question in, in, in various branches of math physics. One is, one is, for example, a lot of them has to do with broadly, people say it in numerative geometry, but whereas the numerative geometry is more of a, is more of a label rather than description what it is. It's, it's, oh. uh, it's just some, some, uh, some, uh, some questions of counting, you know, how many zero eigenstates some operators have, and can be said that this is this is a question of counting like how many such and such curve lines such and such algebraic variety and so this I've spent a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of time thinking about that that sort of questions and this is and miraculously or not I and mean, this can be debatable it's not all my insights it's uh, it's insight of many people these are these are uh, related to some other questions also in mathematical physics like like we've uh, if you count just um, some sort of basic uh, curve counting problems, uh, rather famous ones. So Rahul Banerjee and I were able to solve in terms, in terms of like basic probability, like things mm -hmm. that had to do with with partitions, this you know, kind of, they're kind of old, real old-fashioned objects, and uh, and and so forth. Am I am I right uh, that? One of the frameworks that had intrigued you was ran the, the question of the random. It it's part of that. I mean, it's just it's a few of um, if uh, everything is random. So it's uh, this is this is uh, this is. I mean, if you want to study, you know, 
I think myself as a scientist, I kind of want to study outside the world with tools of mathematics or bring the problems into mathematics from the outside world. And outside the world, everything's random. So you have to somehow, that's part of that. It, you, can't, you can't really avoid it. So this is, a, you have to, I guess you have to embrace it. And it's, a, and that's a, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful that for some, when, when some randomness is related to something else, which maybe, maybe not, not random, you didn't think it's random at all. So if you, if you think of this, like this kind of curve counting problems, new to geometry problems. So these are the kind of problems, like if I have a, you know, like a classical problem, I have a four conics in the plane, or five conics in the plane, or how many other conics are tangent to that? That's a classical problem. So you, you think, well, what that has to do with randomness? It's not a random question. It's a very specific question. And there's, uh, but in fact, these counting problems do have direct relation, some kind of randomness, and you can, you can do them in this, in this, in this way. Yeah. So uh, literally after Chicago, where do you go? Uh, we went to Berkeley. And again, what's the appeal? What, what brings you oh, there? Oh, Berkeley. Berkeley. I mean, right, you California. know, you know Berkeley. Yeah. I know Berkeley. And Berkeley is not even California. Berkeley is Berkeley. Berkeley uh -huh. is uh, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a singular place. Yes, it's also it's also I'm uh, you know I'm not going to make a secret I have my political views. I'm all very. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not. It's, it has very little to do with, with being born in the Soviet Union. I just, you know, somehow I like the ideas of justice and equality and so forth. And so. So you made the decision for cultural reasons. No, I mean it's just it's a good. It's it's a very refreshing place to be. Berkeley. You go there, people are free. People are very uh, honest and somehow stand stand for good for good for good causes. I, I really I really different. like people of Berkeley. Yeah. But does it have a strong mathematics department? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it has a very strong. Uh, mathematics again, department. is there? And it has this math institute too, for which I, ah. I spent I spent a lot. Of, first, they, first that math institute really helped me at some point when the, when Chicago gave me this this postdoctoral invitation. They didn't quite have the money the first year to have me support me the fur the full first year, and so it was very helpful for me to go for half of that year to go to this institute at Berkeley. So I was really super helpful, and. Uh, and then and 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 I've uh, but they've doing and this is this is a very small thing yeah, and but they're doing a lot of good to a lot of uh, for for just developing the math and you know, so making creating opportunities for mathematicians in this country and abroad to further their research and so I've been trying to uh, to kind of pay back that debt and do a lot of work for them. Yeah. Uh, you you go with a position or a yeah. fellowship? Or? I went to Berkeley as a tenure track, but it ah. was a tenure track, and I was subsequently tenured. So it's a, and how yeah. long are you there? I was there for three years. So why do you leave this paradise? Oh, it's uh, so. This is uh, well. I mean, it's, everything's interwoven, right? So I have a, a wife and family, and uh, my wife works in uh, across the bay in San Francisco. Works in one of those financial corporations. It used to be uh, in the very old days. It was called, uh, I guess, Cutter or Kemper, and then Scudder Kemper, and then bought by. Zurich and then by Deutsche Bank and then subsequently moved as, as the is the dot the first time the dot com, com bubble burst that, that was, the, what remains of it was moved to New York City so so that's uh, we go so east we go east <laughs> um, do you have at any of these points responsibilities I've talked to mathematicians who have no teaching responsibilities. Where they are is entirely mm -hmm. devoted to their research. Others who have a mixture of it. Uh, do you begin to have any teaching responsibilities? Oh, I did it all, all the time. Yeah, math. All the time? Yeah, no, I, my, my whole life I'm teaching, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Um, so you're in fact, in Berkeley was maybe the heaviest teaching load I ever had, but I didn't mind at all. I've, I, I've, uh, I thought uh, my favorite course was uh, numerical analysis. It was yeah. really far from was really far from what I do in my life. But it's it's such a concrete course, people. And so it's a problem. You have to solve it on the computer. So this right. can be, you know, this is super concrete. And to have a uh, have a teach a hands on course like this, which is uh, is this to undergraduates or undergraduates? Yeah, undergraduates. No, I haven't taught a graduate course in Berkeley. It was uh, ah. yeah, so there's a long uh, waiting list for that, and three years was not enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, it just so happens in this series of interviews, I've been talking to both mathematicians and computer theorists, and of uh -huh. course there are borderlines and non-borderlines, but are you also taking an interest in computer theory at all, or...? Not really, no. 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 Uh, it's a, I taught a course, one course I taught was a new course, now it's, it's still continuing. It's still continuing to be taught at Berkeley, but it didn't exist, so I was the first person to teach it. It was a basic course in combinatorics. 
And in that course, I had a lot of kids from computer science sign up, and those were really, I really enjoyed those, having those kids in my class. That was really, I mean, it was, it has, I mean, again, it's a basic course. It's, it doesn't require, it's, does, I, mean, I like, I mean, I like the subject a lot. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, well, of course, what I was teaching in undergraduate course is not exactly a cutting cut research. But it's, uh, it's certainly I, I certainly appreciate that. But it's uh, I don't do I don't do my own research. I, I do program a lot. I mean do I do code a lot. But it's a uh, it's uh, but this it's is kind not of a strong direction. Of no, no, it's not. It's not. Interest. It's not. The code itself is actually kind of uh, it's uh, uh, it's intentionally very uh, primitive. Uh -huh. Just because I mean the problem itself is so complicated, then it's uh, it's uh, you want to make the code primitive so that if it's uh, something I doesn't see. work out, you I you know what who to blame. <laughs> A number of the uh, computer theorists yeah. I've talked to have uh, said that more and more people are seeing how fundamental mathematics is to where the computer um, theory will go. Uh -huh. So and vice versa. I mean, and when vice we, versa. Yeah, we're not. I mean, in what I do, there's just. Just you're not going to make any progress without computers, really, because it's a, it's it's just the exam. I mean, I mean, of course, there's there's there there are, there are different approaches to math. Uh, some people can do it uh, um, just by somehow contemplating deep ideas, which is I I, I can't talk about this. Like no, I don't understand how this works. Uh, yeah. More ordinary scientists like myself, we sort of go through examples. But uh, the examples are just too complicated now to do by hands or, any, or just it just you have to do to, to literally learn what's going on. You have to you have to use a computer. It's just otherwise it's right. not going to. Are, are pretty much everywhere departments of mathematics and computer yeah. theory are still quite separate. I mean they they. Oh yeah, they of course, yeah. A, they don't yeah. combine these two. But that that makes sense, right? I mean, this is the the math is a subject. And computer science is a subject. Those are two different subjects. The fact that the mathematicians use computers and computer science is influenced by math is... It's almost it's, irrelevant. It's, it's, it, yeah, okay. It's like saying, you know, chemistry and biology are very, very interwoven subjects, but they're not the same. Right. And so, so that's it. So in the East, what, where is your position? I was at Princeton for, uh, for a long time before moving to Columbia. Was that the um, Institute? Uh, it was, Princeton? no, this, uh, the department. The, department. The, the department. Yeah. yeah. Now it's another opportunity to talk a little uh -huh. bit about mathematic education, if you if, if that would interest you, because I've read um, since later on you develop a strong connection with the teaching of mathematics both in Moscow mm -hmm. and in the United States. Mm -hmm. So more and more you're in a position to look at the different strategies of education, maybe even the different quality of mathematic education and so forth. Are you beginning to think about this at this point? What 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 your students are like here, and soon what your students will be like in Moscow? Is, is there um, a difference? No, I don't think I have such a deep thought about that. It's it's uh, here at Columbia. Our students are very international. We had we had guest students from from all over the world, and so this is uh, there's some of course the American ones. There's some they have their strengths and they have their weaknesses and the and the. But 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 I think this the the maybe one thing I want to say is yes. the, is is um, um, maybe some potential student will, will, mm -hmm. will sometime will be watching it. It's it's uh, how people come to science, how people come to math. It is obviously important, uh, but it's not as crucial. It's it's uh, you you read the lives of. Great mathematicians like you know Lefschetz. He was a chemical engineer until be in, because of an unfortunate accident had to switch career, and so he switched to math really really advanced age. And uh, and many people like that. it's just you know once you once you once you re discover yourself a passion for science, passion for math, it's it, it does help a little bit. I, I imagine to uh, to have a few years of uh, head start on others. And so. I mean, it doesn't hurt to be a prodigy, but it's uh, it's it's not essential. It's and you speak, of course, as someone who did right, not but start. Right, it, but it's it's also I mean, the majority of American students they they feel uh, maybe slightly awkward as they start the graduate school because they, there's there's people from from Europe, from China, who already you know a lot, and they've uh, we, a lot of things that Americans just beginning to learn. But they catch up. They uh, they they 
they grow into really good mathematicians. It's a, it's a so this counters, uh, I mean, not yeah. counters, but it, it involves mm -hmm. the question, of, this may be a cliché without any mm -hmm. meaning, which is that mathematical insight comes particularly strongly to the young. I mean, certainly this is inside, not true no. of the inside, 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 no. Inside, no. I mean, the quick, the, the, the young, I mean, of course, there's a, there's hard biological evidence to back it up. I mean, as you're young, of course, your your mind works faster, you're, you're, you're faster at absorbing information, you can learn many things that you will be very hard to learn later in life. But, uh, but it takes, uh, uh, as, as you grow older, you compensate by experience, by, by some kind of depth, and mm -hmm. the and it's it's um, it's not uh, it's not clear which one wins. So it's a somehow in math, it sometimes takes a long time to come around to like I said insight. This insight is not is not something is not something you typically even the best people don't have it in an instant. Even though it sounds kind of close, but uh, but it usually takes a long time to develop the really. To find the really the right way to look at the problem, to really do I mean, something which is which is deeply not obvious, often, often takes a long time. And so, th another thing I always like to say my students is that is that if you look at a great scientist, I mean of course there are exceptions, but but uh, but typically great scientists have don't have so many great ideas in their life, and it's uh, so if you you know you shouldn't worry that that it takes you a long time to 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 come up with one, or it's been a long time since you had your last good idea. It's just, it's just, it's just, just on average, people don't have so many great ideas. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's still amazing when people have some good idea. It's still right. amazing how the how we basically primates come up with this. <laughs> with this <laughs> as, as a historian, it really yeah. strikes me that yeah. so many of the great mathematical awards yeah. are given almost deliberately to the young. I mean, the field cut uh -huh. for example, uh -huh. of age and so forth. So that suggests, at least historically, maybe even an eccentric interest in youth and mathematics. Well, I think the young people need more support. If you think it somehow, this is, this is, uh, this is in math. It's always we always try to um, to encourage people to, to you know, somehow to do math, and we somehow have to I think. You know, as people grow more established, more uh, become become more important, they uh, you know they get different kinds of recognition, and that's uh, and that's uh, that's fine, and it's uh, but I think it's 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 good for a field that to 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 play this kind of high recognition on on young people. It's, uh, Again, with the because it's the it's it's it's. it's uh, I mean, it's, of course, it is some kind of weight you also put on people's shoulders, but it's, uh, but it, uh, but it, it's good to have a, to give a spotlight to the idea, to somebody's ideas or somebody's work, when they need it. When they need, it. yeah. Well, maybe we should begin this in history. But yeah. It'll be a long time before historians are rewarded when they're young. Yeah. But we are we're talking about mathematicians now. Uh, another thing that strikes me as a non-mathematician mm -hmm. is, how shall I put it, the currency of your colleagues, that people who died 300 years ago are still oh. in conversation with mathematicians now. Well, uh, well it's not like in the here at Columbia you have core courses, like they still did Plato. <laughs> yeah, but, they, but basically... But we don't, we don't read Euler. We appreciate Euler, but we don't really read it. People, people are actually incompetent to read. Even Jacobi now, because they wrote in Latin, and very few people read Latin now. And but the problems that are posed <laughs> yeah. continue to be interesting. It, it somewhat, yeah. So it's, it's, uh, the, a lot of problems that are posed are now considered irrelevant, too. But it's, it's, it's true. I mean, if you have a... If you have a if you kind of study the workings of great might like Euler or Gauss or or uh, it's amazing it's amazing how you know what what they, the insights they had and then uh, it's uh, but of course it's true that the math has, has you know, changed beyond recognition since the time of even of Gauss so it's uh, would you say even in your time oh yeah of course i mean this is the kind of things that we do now that they all looked Beyond impossible when I was little, when I was young, yeah. 
Really? Oh, yeah. And we're talking sure. about somebody who's now in his, what, late 40s? Or? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. It has changed so much. Oh, it, yeah. it has changed very rapidly, yeah. This is another thing in which young people, of course, have advantage over over people like I, is that, is that the, the, this is, 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 is math develops. You, you, you can't, I mean, you, you can't do it by yourself. You have to kind of write with the peloton, and uh, this requires just staying current abreast of, you know, so many things happens, just reading a lot of stuff, going right. to lots of lectures, just working through through papers, and then, you know, it's easier when you're young to, to absorb new information, so this is... Uh, maybe it won't interest you to talk about it, but mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, I'm very interested in your continued commitment to, if you will, a career, or as a teacher, mm -hmm. perhaps it's that, in both Moscow and well, New York now. Right. Um, how did you go about continuing, in a way, to live in both worlds? Well, we, I'm still working on how this exactly going to... So what will be now that our kids are out of... Uh, so our, our younger daughter is in college now, and our older is finishing grad school. Mm -hmm. So we're, uh, my wife and I were preparing for... Uh, for uh, well, we are... Empty nest. Exactly, exactly. Yes. We're, uh, we're, uh, we're still figuring out how exactly how exactly are, what the new balance will be between Moscow and New York and probably spending more time in Moscow. But I've always, I always felt that, I mean, somewhere and Moscow is my, both places my home and so it's, uh, my parents are there. Are they yeah, still there? Yes, they, my brother's there. I so, see, I yeah, see. It's, uh, Again, I ask a question that, that may not really be very uh -huh. relevant and that is, is there still, can you argue, an intellectual climate difference between um, the mathematical world in Moscow and So here. this is the, the, I can't speak for Moscow as a whole because I don't, what my brother tells me about uh, uh, his kid's school is maybe, doesn't sound quite what we had. But uh, certainly what I see at, uh, at universities, that's, that's very resemblant of what we had. So the, the young people I, I see now as the math students, they, they could have been me. 20 uh, years ago so really yeah this is this since they've uh, they they're there's uh, there are fewer math majors now it's uh, you know for well of course the country's got smaller and also there's all right. sorts of other careers that people can pursue so math was also a little bit of a, uh like math was also a subject that uh, would draw people I mean would draw people who as a I mean, most politically neutral subject you can probably imagine so now of course I mean, there are people who have well, I don't know. Let's, let's not look at political. What, yeah. what, what about you were speaking yeah, but, of in your youth about yeah. the the climate of learning? Right. Do you find that still quite? Oh yeah, strong? the universities. Yeah, that's a, the, 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 this absolutely. Yeah, people. This is the same. With, very close. With all yeah, the very close. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a, this, the, this kind of you know there's something. It's not exactly the genes, but it's it's some kind of maybe social genes. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't go away in one generation. It's a this is I I think it's going to be fine. I mean this is this will survive on a smaller scale maybe. So this is the uh, there's still mass circles functioning, Olympiads taking place, and it's so. Uh, but so some seeds of that are being uh, sown in the United States too, like uh, around in, in Bay Area. There are very vibrant mass circles community. There's lots of people participating in math olympiads and so right. forth so this and is in new york city too actually so it's a some of that may even have been seeded by russians who or came, yeah. not necessarily russians just just some european like uh, eastern europe especially but also western europe and right. so it's yeah it's so toward the end of our conversation again uh -huh. I'm, I'm going to ask some very basic things um for example um the idea of a proof mm -hmm. um can't be as strong in economics, the economics that you study is your, right. of your youth, as in mathematics. Can you characterize to me the the notion of a proof in mathematics? What? Uh, right, I think proof is overrated. Uh, oh, okay. It's uh, it, this is the this is the short version. The long yes. version is that is that uh, there are different stages to our understanding, and so there's some um, what what. Our community tr places a lot of uh, a lot of emphasis o on being somebody to prove a particular statement. Yes. 
whereas there's a lot of work before and after. So like before there's a person who realizes that something is true, somehow maybe observed a certain phenomenon. First the person realizes that it's interesting to look at something. Then maybe a different person realizes, oh, there's something interesting happens. Look at me. I have this conjectural vision what it's going to be. And then, uh, and then there's some maybe intermediate results. Somebody finally first comes with a, with a first complete proof. Which is usually is, is some kind of I mean, <laughs> but just by the laws of nature, usually it's some kind of monster sewn together from pieces of of different ideas in a way in the kind of you know some in in the in the in the first it's like for the first draft of something it's the it's 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 some it works but it's 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 like a, it's 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 a building which in which you use the piece of. Of of that and a piece of a piece of cloth and a piece of uh, uh, of uh, concrete and then it's just it's just something, and then and then later come people and analyze this and 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 find what is the essential what is the essential idea that makes this work and then they uh, they they analyze this proof or maybe they come up with different ideas and then finally we come with a proof that is now. That is now really explains what's happening. This is this is the maybe the highest level of understanding. Before it starts with kind of sniffing, oh, there must be something, to define that not only people understand why what happens and why it happens, but also clearly understand why, like the the, the real reason why this happens is, is now being understood. And so this is there's a whole like I said there's a whole range of this sort of development, and. Um, and it's just different measures of how well we understand, how well we understand. And it's just, uh, like I said, we start at the beginning. I, I come from the background where understanding is good, unconditional. So right. the more you understand, the better. And to have to have a formal proof is a measure. And to have a formal proof which is moreover is beautiful is the next measure. So you, you kind of. And actually, in math, we 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 spent a lot of time rethinking. This is this is a subject which is. Uh, Maybe it's not like classics, but it's it's among the sciences the subject may be unique in in how much time is spent rethinking our foundations and really and really making sure they've uh, they're optimal and they're uh, they really um, they really uh, when when they build we typically build not on some. I mean, the next the next project's typically built not on this kind of shabby construction that was the first to yeah, right. to prove, but it all now works now built on something solid and beautiful, and then we kind of this is the way we built it, kind of the next the next level. I love the use among mathematicians of the term beautiful and elegant. Uh huh. Uh, it's because of my own aesthetic background, but among the scientists, mm -hmm. it's the mathematicians who use this word. In my experience, oh, beautiful. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>